<laughs> we plan things. <laughs> or not. I'm going to write a, a song about... Um, I really hope 2021 is better than 2020. I really hope 2021 is better than 2020. No, you can't put that shitty shanty that you just tried to fucking make up in your head to porn music. You, like, you can't get like some baseline funk in there and make that cool. It's just never going to happen. <laughs> Playing. This is bullshit. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 271 for Thursday, the 4th of February, 2021. Uh, there's, 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 there's something there. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and what you just heard was from the amazing Stephen Cogswell. And I just want to put it out there, Kent. We are we are really open to the possibility of having a new intro thing every week if someone wants to just clip out some uh, some favorite parts of each oh, episode. Yeah. I don't want to obligate Stephen Cogswell, but we will play it every fucking time he puts something out there. So, um, And also, I don't know if you looked at the metadata. Made, metadata? Metadata. I fucking <laughs> words are hard. I, I I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Um, he put in there that it's like Ritual Misery greatest hits is the album. Ah. Uh, yeah, like he he actually put full metadata on, in there. So I'm uh, like, uh, has me curious. Like, is he gonna like come out with some shit? Like that would just that would that'd be absurd. Absolutely hmm. absurd. Um, I'm drinking a home that would blow my mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm drinking a home brew tonight. Uh, Kent is drinking a kitchen water so kitchen water yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's zero percent alcohol all the taste none of the filling or something like that um oh shit i'm getting a phone call who the hell's calling me right now fuck that get the hell out of here you should know what time it is why are they not watching this stream that's what i want to know who the fuck is calling exactly. me and not watching the stream ken how you been dude like it's been a it's been a week it's been, well it's been two weeks yeah fuck it. It, yeah, it has. Yeah, we didn't have a show last week. No. Um. Yeah. No. I, for the most part, I've been all right. Um. Sleep is stupid. <laughs> sleep sucks. <laughs> um. I, it's it's one of those things. If I can have any superpower, 
you know, people are like, well, I'd, I'd like to fly. I'd like to be invisible. I'd like to shoot laser beams from my eyes. I don't know. My superpower would just be not having to sleep. Okay. Sleep is bullshit. Hmm. Uh, did did you recently oversleep, or is that like like you trying to get <gasps> no, something done? No, I don't. And... I don't get enough sleep. Like I, it it's getting worse. I think like this week, I think I've averaged like three hours of sleep a night, uh... and it takes a toll. And uh, that's why I'm drinking water tonight. Actually, I'm just not feeling great mm. right now. So I think. I think I might be going to bed early tonight <laughs> <laughs> to try to try to get more sleep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It it doesn't work for me. Like, I, it doesn't matter if I go to bed at ten o'clock at night, at midnight, at one a.m. It doesn't matter. I'm going to lay there for two to three hours uh, or more sometimes. You need a Kindle and some Dragonlance books. Um. That sounds cool. Dragonlance books are great. That's what I did when I couldn't sleep, when I was having trouble sleeping. I bought my Kindle, uh, Kindle Paperwhite, loaded some mm. Dragonlance books that I had uh, you know, just lying around on a drive somewhere, and read the Dark Souls trilogy. And it was amazing. And it put me to sleep. You read a chapter and you're not quite tired. You start reading another one, and it takes your mind off the day. Like it just, the day, the thoughts that are keeping you awake, that are you know, churning through and everything else. And, <laughs> it just it it takes all that away because you're sucked into the imagination world of Margaret Weiss and mm. like you know, all of a sudden your eyes are getting tired and you finish a chapter and you're looking at the next chapter it's like 17 pages you're like I don't have that in me and you put it down and out it's so good I'll have to try that um, yeah so speaking of of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman and Dragonlance mm -hmm. we're gonna get some new Dragonlance in the not too distant future yes the suit that we had uh, talked about a couple, well, a couple months ago I guess has been resolved mm -hmm. they've they've settled uh, out of court and from what I understand it wasn't a fiduciary thing is a it was they just like they made the terms work the way that all parties agreed to. And we're going yep. to get a new Dragonlance trilogy, and yeah, hell yes. And I'm I'm really hoping that that also translates into the the Dungeons and Dragons RPG because we have not had any fifth edition materials for Crit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from what I understand, and this is purely from my memory, so I could be very wrong, but I believe I read somewhere where Tracy or Margaret had said that this was like the closing chapter for the heroes of the lance like this is the end because hmm. uh, most most of them if you if you read up to current times and of course i've still got i've still got three left uh, the last trilogy that they wrote together i still have that left so i haven't even hmm. fully caught up hmm. um most of the heroes have passed on mostly due to old age you know we're we're at the point now where we're 50 years after the War of the Lands, you know, so most of them have, have passed on. Um, and this is, this next trilogy is supposed to kind of like wrap up their saga, you know, cap, mm. it, cap it off where, okay, now all the, all the stories of the Heroes of the Lands have been told and, and you can move on from here, but the original characters, the original six, uh, well, I guess it's like nine or whatever, but that original group, their stories will have been finished at the end of this next trilogy. So mm. um, I don't want to ruin anything, but some of them, some of some of the people, their passing was expectedly unexpected. You know what I mean? Like it was like the oh my gosh, it's so so invested in these characters we've been reading for yeah, damn near thirty years. Yeah, Dragon Knights is so amazing, dude. And I, I'm really hoping that this deal blossoms into not just the novels, not just the role-playing game, but into other things, like maybe a movie. Maybe we'll finally get uh, a movie. Um, that would be a, a be real thrilling. movie. Or like an HBO Max series or something like that would be yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, if uh, I, I mean, if we could get Benioff and Weiss to work on a Dragonlance like a trilogy of, season, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause all, I, I cause all the materials there, we wouldn't have to go through seasons six, seven and eight where they were just kind of pulling shit out of their ass. They, all the material is already there. We're there. We're not waiting for, for George R. R. <laughs> Martin to, you know, fabricate some shit that's never going to fucking happen. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Well, it's funny that you said said Wise, uh, DB Wise, one of the the um, um, producers, directors, creators, whatever of the Game of Thrones television series. Uh, his last name is Weiss, same mm. as Margaret Weiss. So I wonder if there's any any relation there. I think his has two S's, right? And hers has one? I don't know. I've, I'd have to look. I've considered this before, <laughs> uh, but I'm probably very wrong on all of that. Um, yeah. And I, I could Google it, but that's no fun. I like being being open to being wrong on the show. Like, besides, no. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not fun to be right all the time. So it, it, it is. Sell being incorrect. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's just not funny. <laughs> Um, oh man! Uh, I uh, so last time we talked, I was about to purchase a truck, my new power wagon, which I did buy. Oh, right. I got my, okay. my twenty twenty one power wagon, not fully loaded, but it's got all the all the things that I desperately needed to compensate for what my old truck was lacking. And the reason mm. I missed last week's show was because as we were leaving <laughs> on Tuesday night, as we were leaving. Our salesman was like, if there's anything else, you know, he did the, the standard pitch. If there's anything anybody's looking for or whatever, whatever, you know. And my wife yeah, sure. my wife was like, well, if you happen to get a fully loaded Chrysler Pacifica in white, let me know. Okay. We get a call the next morning. Hey, guess what they just offloaded from the truck? <laughs> so two days later, okay. Thursday. So we picked up my truck Tuesday night. Thursday morning. We headed down to the dealership, and we were buying her Pacifica. Oh wow! Okay, so I just looked this up. This is a, a minivan. Uh, it's a wagon. So a minivan. It's it's a it's a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, what? let's go with wagon. Uh, looks suspicious, suspiciously like a minivan, but I guess it's a wagon. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> what makes it a wagon? What makes it a wagon and not a minivan? Minivan minivan's a bad word, just like station wagon used to be. Ah, oh, so I'm looking at um, Chrysler.com. Uh-huh. Um, it says 2021 Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan. <laughs> it's not a hybrid, though, so, you know. <gasps> okay, got you. All right, well. Um, uh, all right. It's a... Uh, so, wagon. It, yeah. <laughs> she uh, she, she t- went to test drive it on Wednesday after we got the call, and she let us know, oh, my gosh, I love it. It's so nice. I've already named it. I named it Pearl because that's the, it's a Pearl clear coat. <laughs> At that point, okay. I knew we were buying a damn minivan. Like, is that's just it was a matter of which vehicle to trade in. You know, we started looking at which vehicles we had equity in and stuff like that. We got all that figured out, all the finance stuff's figured out. Um, like I said, w- when I bought my truck, I don't want people thinking that I just spent seventy thousand on a truck and you know just dropped it and <laughs> walked away. I got an extraordinary amount for my old truck. So, like the the value that I got for my old truck was really high, high much higher than I should have gotten. Mm-hmm. And uh, the new truck I bought, and it you know missing a couple packages that I was wanting. The price was perfect for what we were looking for, and yeah, so it's it's been it's been kind of a strange last week. And mm. anyway, if it, my buying my truck was like an hour long experience, I went in there already had already done you know all the things that I needed to do, walked in there and drove drove away like an hour hour and a half later, the most. My wife's car, we got there at one. We left at like eight. Mm. It was ridiculous. I hate buying I, cars. See, yeah, that's what I hate about new car shopping. You go to a dealership, like you might like fuck the rest of your day. Like you're you're yeah. done. That's all you're doing today. Yeah. The only it thing I can say is have financing before you go there. Like be pre-approved at a bring bank you already a, know. Yeah. Bring a pal. Bring a pal. That uh, yeah, that that does cut out a ton of time, like literally hours if you bring a pal. Yep. Yep. So, yep. um, I would like to talk about the changes in atmosphere. In atmosphere. Yes. Did you know that we are entering a seventy-year low in solar uh, solar energy, like solar? eruptions from the surface of the sun oh like like solar flares things like that yes you know how no, i know, I did not know. <laughs> we've, we've had two good nights of great aurora this last week and both nights were shit for my area because 
of, you know, solar reasons. And I learned a lot about how to tell when the aurora are going to happen. And basically it says that if I ever want to get the pictures that I want, I'm going to have to go north. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. And like looking into when it's going to start coming back up, they're like, yeah, mm, maybe a decade. Oh. Like, well, oh. Yeah. Well, damn. So. That's. That sucks. Yeah. Um, the new the new truck has a sunroof though, so I don't have to get out of the car. I can have the heat on in the car and just look up at the sky and see if the aurora is right above me instead of looking out the window. Oh yeah, 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 and possibly crash. <laughs> well, I don't do it when I'm driving. Shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Man, I was I was looking at uh, at the calendar the other day and thinking about like what I was doing a year ago. Mm-hmm. Dude, we've been in this COVID crap for almost a year at this point. Yeah, um, it was it's wild. It, it was like middle of February when, you, well, it was like the, it was the first or second show of February that you and I were talking about this new shit coming from China, this new disease coming from China. <laughs> yeah, you know, breaking news um, every time. It's freaking crazy, dude. So this time last year, I was I had a regular weekly R, <clears throat> excuse me, a weekly um, uh, D and D game session. Yeah. And I had just created a new character that I was eager to to try out. Mm-hmm. And um, then COVID hit, and we haven't played <laughs> since. We always talked about getting on Roll20 or something like that mm-hmm. and, and continuing the game that way, but it just hasn't come to be. And I'm starting to really get the RPG bug again. <laughs> I really want to play. So I asked, I asked Lucas, my son and dungeon master... <laughs> to make me a one shot so that I can try out my my new character, and um, so I think we're gonna do that soon. Yeah, um, it's gonna be man. I'm I'm so looking forward to doing it. And uh, the other day we found actually Lucas found uh, somebody had has done a Star Wars like conversion basically of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Okay. And it's one of, it's one of those freeware things. Like the PDFs are just free. Just take them. Right. Uh, it's it's done in the Wizards of the Coast like style guide and all that kind of stuff. Like the uh, you know as long as you don't sell it, like you can use their formatting mm-hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. It is the most professional, uh, uh, you like 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 fan made freeware type stuff. Well, freeware. It's not software, but. Uh, <laughs> Like it's 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 amazing. It looks exactly like like the Dungeons and Dragons Player's Guide, but it's Star Wars flavored. Nice. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. I've got uh, like I've got like uh, ship guides and and like um, basically like the monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah. it's like alien species and creatures and stuff like that. Do, do you have a link for that for the I, uh, for the show? I should <laughs> <laughs> I will um, actually yeah while uh, while we're talking I will I will locate it um, but yeah I so I think you know it's been a very very long time since I've done any like DMing or GMing or, or whatever mm-hmm. but I think I think this might be the thing to get me back into that because I kind of I, I need another creative outlet and I think this might be it creating creating an adventure and running a, a game for for some folks so I, I think that would be so much freaking fun in the star wars uh, universe yes in this yeah exactly it's dungeons and dragons fifth edition but star wars <laughs> so um yeah i think i think it's gonna be a blast That's um awesome. when, when's the last time you did any role-playing um two years ago at christmas time we played uh part of the minds of vandalever it's the starter pa- starter adventure for D and D fifth edition, and we uh, we got through some of it and then had to had to quit for the night and we just kind of never got back to it. So it's been a while, but I was DMing that of course with four novice players. So uh, mm. I wouldn't say that I'm the greatest DM. Like I know I know the rules and the flow and stuff like that, but it's the performance of it that I don't quite nail. And yeah. Um, yeah, we just never quite got back into it. And if, now, of course, I have um, uh, Gloomhaven down here, and, and I'd love to play that, but I can never find anybody to play with. So, yeah, when it, when it comes to DMing for me, the mechanics were the were usually the the more difficult thing 
for me, like remembering what dice are supposed to be rolled for what situation. But that's one of the wonderful things about D and D Fifth Edition is things are uh, simplified, and it's like it's very difficult to forget uh, what they are. You know, maybe do a quick review before your game session, and then you're like, you got it. You know exactly what to do. I'm I'm gonna cut that clip right there where you were playing with your zipper and just make you listen to it about fifteen times. Oh dang! I'm so, yeah. I just realized like my my microphone is right next to the zipper and I yeah. was absolutely uh, yeah. So wow. while you were talking about uh, all that stuff, all we heard is <laughs> yeah, it was awful. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Gotta well. love the lavalier. Um, I tell you what, man. Mm. It's uh, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling like all this talk about Dungeons and Dragons and role playing and stuff like that has got me kind of in the mood. For a game. Ah, I might be able to accommodate that. Let's try that. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. This week's game is called Cuisine of the Gods. How much do you know about Greek stuff? I know I, I I love a gyro or a, a Greek salad. Um, there's, okay. Do either of those count? They're both food food related. So, sure, sure. Th- that's, well, that's good. If you know something about Greek food, that that might help you out here. No, that's because that's all I know about it. That's I've, we've we've we've, <laughs> we've hit peak foodie, peak Greek foodie. Well, again, I mean, you might be in luck here because I'm going to name something. And you're going to tell me if it's a Greek god or a Greek dish. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. So not only are you going to tell me, if, is it a god or a dish, you're going to describe it to me and tell me well, um, well, yeah. what it is. Well, duh. So if it's a god, you're going to tell me like what it, what it's a god of. Right. If it's a dish, you're going to tell me like what it what it consists of, right. like what, what it probably tastes like, things okay. like that. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, okay. Let's start with... Chiron, and I can spell these for you if you would prefer. Chiron, Chiron. is that C H I R O N? That is correct. Yeah, yeah, Chiron. Um, I, I'm gonna say that's a food, and okay. I'm gonna go with uh, that. Sounds like a sweet treat, and I say sweet in the non-American way because everything in America is way sweeter. Um, right. It is a a sweet treat consisting of. We're gonna go with uh, a special. It's it's a it's a uh, uh, we're gonna go with a pastry. It's a sweet pastry that mm-hmm. is um, flavored with uh, like nutmeg or cinnamon or something like that. Some some earthy spice that. Okay. Uh, that comes out in uh, in in swirly shapes, uh, and is uh, uh, deep fried or baked. Um, <laughs> okay. And uh, and to top it all off, they put just a dab of um, uh, whipped sweet cream. Okay, um, th- that was a quite lengthy description for what is actually a god. You are wrong. <laughs> Chiron is a centaur god i agree with uh sam i want what i described not the centaur god right <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly well uh, i mean you don't, you never know it might that might actually be the description for something that i have in my list here your next word D A K O S, Dacos. Dacos. Dacos sounds like a Greek god. Uh, he's okay. the god of misinformation. Uh, the god of uh, not lies, but untruths. Mm, not lies, but untruths. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, the only untruth here is that you're describing a god. You're actually describing, or uh, you should have said dish. Uh, Dacos is dry barley rusk soaked in olive oil and topped with sliced tomatoes, herbs, feta cheese, and sometimes capers. All right, that sounds pretty good too. 
Maybe I didn't, <laughs> maybe I didn't have dinner. This might not be the right game for me tonight. <laughs> All right, tell me about Pissara. 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 Pissara definitely sounds like a food. I'm trying to fix my camera here because I suck at life. Uh, Pissara <laughs> definitely sounds like a food. I'm going to say it's a pasta dish with uh, with uh, goat cheese and um, beans. Okay, uh, not not too far off here, actually. So you are correct. It is a dish, and it is, I don't know what the hell kefalonian means, or kefalonian, uh, but it's a kefalonian salad with fresh greens, sun-dried tomatoes, feta, and pine nuts. I was actually really close on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so my Greek pronunciation is not that great, so I'm not sure if this is pronounced... Hecate or he Hecate? I don't know. H E C A T E. I'm going to go with Hecate. Uh, Hecate is the Greek god of wine and spirits. Okay. Um, that sounds like uh, Dionysus to me. Uh, but you are correct that it is a god. In fact, it's a goddess known as the, mis the mistress of animals. She is often associated with witchcraft necromancy and the moon i mean i've been to a couple couple uh uh covens and there's a lot of drinking going on so i call that a right <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah I, and well and you said spirits so i i bet she kind of is the goddess of spirits but not in the way of the drinking kind technicalities man let's go <laughs> All right, next up we have Tartarus, or Tartarus, T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. Tartarus? Tartarus is a f god of, uh, god of, uh, the guardian of the city of Tartar in uh, uh, southern Greece. Okay, uh, you're actually really close. It is a god. He is actually, he's one of three gods that kind of work together to guard uh, part of the underworld. Okay. Not Hades, because Hades is the one that... Hey, that I uh, said he... Southern Greece. Right, 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 right. That's <laughs> what I'm getting at here. So, so the, the part of the underworld that they guard is actually below Hades. And it's, it's where, instead of like, because mortals, like bad mortals are sent to Hades, right? Uh titans when they are imprisoned mm. uh, they are sent to uh this place to the tart the tart whatever it is tartarin uh version of hades i guess mm. and uh yeah tar tartarus tartarus or whatever is one of the the guardians of that that hellscape ba titans. bob kelly said is the the god of sauce for fish and sandwiches <laughs> yeah right <laughs> all right um I can dig that. All right. Next up, we have Paximati. P A X I M A D I. Paximati. Paximati is a dish with uh, what, what, what we would call a tortilla, um, a, a thin flour base, uh, usually uh, 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 fried, but n like not oil fried, like pan fried, um, mm -hmm. with. Uh, 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 some vegetables, like a vegetable, you know, the next level up is vegetables, uh, random mm -hmm. vegetables. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they have in Greece, but I'm guessing, you know, probably your, your cabbage and, and carrots and maybe potatoes, things like that. Like, and then on top of that is a layer of, um, chopped, not ground, chopped, uh, uh lamb with a, uh, okay. with a drizzle of sauce across it and possibly, Depending on the on the on the patron, served with a a layer a a, a soft layer or a side side of cheese. Wow. Okay. So if you like, cut out, the I should be a fucking chef. Half, <laughs> if you cut out the second half of what you said, you almost nailed it exactly. It is a dish. It is dried bread prepared with whole wheat, chickpea, or barley flour. Okay. Okay, look, I, I'm, I, I, I'm talking about the deluxe version. Like, you got to pay two extra bucks for that. 
You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. I would say at least. <laughs> that was quite a complex <laughs> dish. Um, all right. So next up, and again, my my Greek pronunciation is not well tuned. Next up, we have dike. Spell D-I- it. D-I-K-E. So use, it in, use it in a sentence. Or maybe it's dikey or DK. I don't know. Dyke. Use, use it in a sentence. Um, your uh, next word that you have to guess is dyke. <laughs> B. Kilford says diagonal cutters. I think that's exactly right. I'm going to say that dyke is the, uh, the Greek <laughs> goddess of smelting and shaping of iron and copper. Wow, uh, that that's very close. Uh, she is a goddess, but she is the goddess of justice. Right, justice by the blade. That's right. <laughs> swift justice. She's the goddess of swift justice. Yes. <laughs> All right, your next one is Xiphias. Xiphias. X-I-P-H-I-A-S. Xiphias is the god of letters, numbers, literacy, and not knowing how the fuck to spell his own name. <sighs> um, y- you no, know, no, it is a dish of swordfish. It's a swordfish dish. Right, named after the goddess of uh, literacy, <laughs> letters, numbers, writing, and not being able to spell his own fucking name. <sighs> All right. Uh, next up, you have horta, H O R T A, horta. Horta is a food. Um, okay. It is similar to um, uh, hummus, except instead of using chickpeas, you actually grind up um, uh, barley and wheat and make it into a paste, and that is uh, horta. Okay. All right, you're, you are correct that it is a dish. Uh, it's actually boiled greens, usually served with olive and lemon, or olive oil and lemon, sorry. And sometimes it's served with boiled potatoes or bread. Uh, Curtis says that's just dough, Amos. Look, man! <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat my bread the way I want to eat my bread. <laughs> All right, your final one is Euros. E U R O S, Euros. It's a god. It's a god of not knowing how to fuck to pronounce shit. <laughs> okay. All right, it is in fact a god. It is the god of the east wind associated with bad luck. Uh yeah, you know what they call east wind in America? Farts. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just passed some euros. Yeah. Yeah. Did yours <laughs> just go through here? It smells like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amos, you got seven out of 10, which is 70%, which means that you should push that button. Uh, the one that just disappeared because I hit the keyboard instead. How about this one right here? <gasps> oh. You got the D. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste, for the sounders today. And uh maybe next week you'll hear the other one because uh, I'm not playing it right now because I got the D. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you you beat the D in fact. Um yeah, good job, good job. Yeah, 70%. We, we, we we don't we don't have a, a, a sounder for beating the D. So we're just gonna have to use the got the D and just you know, just be lucky we got fucking sounders at all because we don't deserve them. <laughs> That's right. We don't. We don't. <laughs> but uh, but thank you very much, Flavor Toothpaste, for providing that. Uh, and and j- as a side note, we uh, uh, yeah. yes. we got the sounders from Flavor Toothpaste and the song from Stephen Cogswell within like two hours of the of each other. Like yep. it, like yep. I I went and checked the email and was like, holy shit! And sent told Kent check the Ritual Misery email. He immediately went and checked right after I had logged off. And there's another item in there, like, oh my god! So yeah, yep, hell yeah, it's pretty fantastic. If you got some shit you want us to to play or just blow us away with your contributions to this show, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Yeah, absolutely. Another way that you can contribute to our show is patreon.com dot com slash ritualmisery. 
go and throw us a buck, we will use it for things uh, on the show. We don't buy personal things for ourselves. We spend that money directly on making ritual misery better. Right. Uh, and there's something we've been meaning to do, but we we keep forgetting because we suck at life and we don't appreciate our patrons enough. <laughs> That's, yes, we do. We do very much appreciate our patrons, but you're right. We do not give them enough appreciation. There is one person who has contributed more to our patron, Patreon than anyone else in the history of the show. Mm-hmm. Lincoln Hammond. Unfortunately, Link we don't have an address for Lincoln. So we need your address. Go into Patreon and give us your address in there. And I'm going to send you something specifically for being our biggest Patreon patron ever. Yep. Thank you, Lincoln. Lincoln's actually a cool dude. I've hung out with him a few times now. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool dude. He's a lot, a lot of fun to talk to you. So. Um, yes, and obviously very, very generous. So thank you very much. Uh, you definitely deserve something. So if we can yeah. get that address, um, look, look for something really cool to come your way. And, and he, it's not that he contributes, and this is a testament to how Patreon works. It's not that he contributes a lot every month. He's a $5 patron, which we've got a few, but he's been, been a Patreon patron for so long that he mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. stacks out. Yeah, Past like almost else. since the beginning. Like yeah. it's he's just been there for quite a while. Yep. And uh it's it's awesome. And we want to thank you with a special token of our appreciation. So get, jump in Patreon and give us your address. And I'm sure one of us will reach out to you via Patreon as well. And uh we'll 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 get some swag to you that only you will have because you are our top uh patron of all time at this point. I say of yep. all time. Oh yeah. Thus far. There we go. Yep, patreon.com slash ritual music. Th dude, thinking, or speaking of, of making the show better, uh, we had a a meeting, you and I. We did. Recently. We did. And, and uh, we're, we're making some changes here. And I think some of them are apparent already, but the, it's, not, um, it's not drastic. No, right. Nothing drastic has right. happened yet. <laughs> yet. Yep. Uh, we did start the show almost on time. That was kind of a drastic change. That that is that is one of the things <laughs> we are definitely trying to do. Right. Um, yeah. So so we are changing up the format a little bit. We're, we're reordering some things. We're making things a little less structured, which I think is where we excel when we're not locked into a a very rigid structure. Right. Uh, we we are adding some new bits that I don't think we're going to. Uh, we're not going to start that today no. because we didn't prepare one, uh, but we are going to rotate some bits in and we're also looking at probably changing our day of recording and streaming. It, I would agree. It is at the probably stage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we are looking at actually shifting from Thursday night. So Thursday night at six uh, uh, Alaskan, which is seven Pacific eight central or mountain or whatever blah, blah. It's basically yep. it's it's in this 10 eastern we end up not being able to get people like richard on as often as we want because it is 10 o'clock in the evening for him um mm -hmm. and thursday i i have a very active family we have a lot of things going on and being out of pocket for several hours on a thursday night is just it's just impeding also, uh, we took a little hiatus over the summer. Kuhan came in and has uh, really <laughs> excelled in the Thursday night slot, and we don't need to be competing yeah. with him and uh, anything else. <clears throat> or them, I should say. Uh, so we looked around, and we figured, you know what? What other time we can't do, like, Friday night? That's, you know, game night. And Saturday night we can't really do, because not only do we would we be fighting with uh, have a drink, but also a movie party. Monday would be a possibility, but then yep. Monday is like Kent's work, stay at work at his day job. Uh, Tuesday, you got night attack. You can't start early enough to pre uh, to, to go ahead of it, and you can't hang out late enough to go after it because of the whole guest issue, as I said. Uh, mm -hmm. Wednesday is the VOD squad right in our slot, and that, that would, you know, again with the early, late thing. So we settled on Sunday. Yep. We're, we're going to go ahead and cap off your weekend. Yeah, and uh, the, the time slot that we're looking at doing, uh, luckily, rolls right into DKG Welp's time slot. 
um, which I think would be awesome if we kind of made it a a regular thing to raid Curly's channel. Right. Um, plus, it, it it's a little earlier. It's the uh, time slot two hours bef before DKG, which I believe is five. Shit, I don't have it in front of me. I think it's five p.m. Pacific, or is it four p.m. Pacific? Either way, it's a little One of those. it's yeah. a little earlier than than it is now. So I'll I'll be able to do the show and then head up and and you know help get kids ready for school on Monday, things like that. Um, it's late enough in the day that Kent will should be woken up from his drunken stupor from Saturday night. <laughs> right. We we hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna we're gonna try transitioning over there. We are gonna run a test run, not this Sunday because it's the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. or sorry, big game because Super Bowl's trademark is stupid. It's the superb owl. Sure. Superb owl. Yeah. Whatever. It's a fucking <laughs> anyway. Uh, so next weekend, the was that going to be like uh, I don't know Daytona 500 weekend really. Uh, we no. will wow. we will try the Sunday thing, and if it works out and if it feels good, then we will continue with that, and we'll eventually, hopefully by the end of February, probably drop off the Thursday night slot. So we might actually do a couple weeks of double episodes. We'll have to see mm. how it goes, um, mm. and then uh, yeah, that'll be that'll just be our spot, and we'll just do it on Sunday and cap off your weekend. Have a drink and shoot the shit and uh, look forward to the next week. Yeah, hell yeah. I think that's going to work out quite nicely. I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Um, new bits. We were talking about new bits. Like, what kind of what kind of new bits are we looking at doing? Well, the problem with bits for us is that we find one we like, we dive in, and then we keep it for far too fucking long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, so to help to help uh, make bits not become stale, uh, we're gonna kind of come up with a bunch of different bits that we could just rotate in and out. Uh, yep. So if you if you find a bit that that you really enjoyed us doing and it's your favorite bit now, you're gonna have to stick around because we're probably not doing it next week. We're gonna do it like three, four, seven, fifteen weeks from now. Who knows? Who knows when it's gonna come back? Yep. Uh, and the, another thing with that is that we will be taking suggestions. If you have a suggestion on a bit that you like or something that you really enjoyed from the past, you'd like to see come back or just new ideas mm -hmm. for new games, new bits, new anything else. Uh, especially if you're a patron, just hop on over to the Discord and there's patron only Discord channels. Hop in there and we will give yours the utmost of consideration. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, some of the things that we're, we're looking at doing is um, a, uh, a rant. Uh, so basically, uh, rants with Amos and rants with Kent will kind of uh, take turns, not in the same night probably. One right. person will be the ranter, and uh, basically go on a sixty-second rant. Just go the f off on whatever is bugging them that day. Yep. And then the other person, the non-ranter, will then uh, basically pass judgment on their <laughs> rant. Uh, so uh, we're we're still toying with the concept of that one, but I can't wait to do that one. That one's going to be a blast, I think. Yep. Uh, then we're also going to toy with the idea of like last week we had the thumbs, uh, thumb up, thumb down idea from the week, and we'll we're, we might mm -hmm. see uh, we, we got to think of a better name for that. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, something along those lines where you have to come into the show with a dedicated idea of something to praise and something to not praise. <laughs> right. Yes. The coolest thing I saw this week was blah 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 blah, and then the thing that I thought was just freaking stupid was. My reaction to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we were, we were actually thinking about bringing back hot takes, but in an altered form. Yeah. Uh, not, the way, not the way that it, it played before, because it was kind of a clumsy bit. Mm -hmm. I want to clean that up a little bit, because I, really, I still really like the concept of it, just not the precise execution that we have and uh, a couple of things we're trying um, to, a couple of things we're going to work on on the show is getting Kent to wire his laptop in so he stops cutting out on Skype, um, not being held to the one hour standard. Like if we end up going short, we go short. If we go a little long, we go a little long. I think the hour will be the standard, but I don't think we're going to be as held to it uh, as as we have been. We're kind of just going to let it free flow and mm -hmm. let it go. Mm -hmm. Um. And we want to include more things from our audience. So if you have things that you're pimping or things that you are noticing, 
get in the Discord. Sh- tell us about it in there. Uh, Kent and I are both in there quite frequently nowadays. So mm-hmm. get in there. Let us know about it. Or if there's something that uh, that you an idea that you have for other things, like say you have a podcast idea you would like us to try for five minutes, little inspiration mm. from the unmade podcast. But if you have a podcast idea yeah. you would like us to give a no shit attempt at for five minutes, mm-hmm. uh, give us those ideas in our discord or email us. I, I guess uh, nobody ever emails us by the way. Uh, well, I don't say no one ever. E- it's very rare. <laughs> we get actual feedback through, through email. Because true, we're so true. accessible on our Discord, but that's just it's part of having multiple channels, right? Right, right. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's um yeah, so so for the audio listeners, bit.ly slash RMP Discord, jump in there and uh and check it out, man. Um there, I think there's a we we've got a channel that's uh just for suggestions. Uh I believe so. That that sounds like a thing that I would do. <laughs> It's it's called it's called RMP suggestions. Yeah. And and then guess what? It's four suggestions. <laughs> yeah. And, and and really the only thing in there is uh is people telling us to to shut up, but that's, you know, don't be on camera so much, that kind of stuff. It's <laughs> y- You might think of it as denigrating, but really it's just what we already know. Right. <laughs> it's re- it's reinforcing our own uh lovely self-image. Um, but yeah, uh, for everything else we've got going on, man, ritualmisery.com. Yep. And if you would like to improve your self-image, cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash swag and get you some, uh, ritual misery gear, like a pillow or a t-shirt, or I was about to say condoms, but they don't, they, I don't think they do condoms, dude. <laughs> um, can you imagine the branded condoms, like the, like the RMP logo? Like on the head of a condom? <laughs> it, I'm sure it would just fail the way this show often does. Um, Kent, uh, what is our main topic for next week? Um, oh, 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 God. Um, this is working out exactly like we workshopped. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, next week's topic is going to be um, bottle openers. Bottle openers. Ladies and gentlemen, bottle come openers. back next week for all the information on bottle openers. <sighs> oh, man. That's going to be a blast. I yeah. can't wait to talk about bottle openers. <laughs> <laughs> we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Um, and again, you can find all the links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. Hell yes. We, we gotta re, 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 we gotta work on that timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Why isn't the music playing? Damn it. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y